What I want to welcome you to today's pre wait a minute. I want to welcome you to today's presentation here of the Fireplace Show. And today we've got a really great guest with us today, and we're going to be talking about a type of appliance in the fireplace industry called hey. a pellet stove. A pellet stove. So my guest today is a gentleman by the name of Matt Mayer. And Matt is with a company up in Antrim, New Hampshire. And Matt's one of the best guys I know in the field on pellet stoves. So Matt, let's tell me a little bit about your background and what makes you such an expert on pellet stoves. Well, uh, pellet stoves are mechanical things and uh, I have about a decade's worth of uh, professional mechanic experience uh, before that. I mean, I was a hobbyist before that. I was a hobbyist after that. Uh, it's just something I've always been around and it's sort of how my mind works and it's what I enjoy, uh, fixing mechanical things, diagnosis, stuff like that. So pellet stoves are kind of a good, a good natural fit that's related to you know this industry and what we do. There you go. So that's a good one. So let's start out. Let's remember that this show is going out to consumers. So the first thing, Matt, is let's tell them what a pellet stove is. What is a pellet stove and what does it do? All right. <laughs> um, well, we all know a wood stove burns regular cordwood. You get your you get your regular piece of firewood like this. You throw that in your wood stove, it produces heat. Pellet stoves are burning a wood fuel, only they are a, an electrical mechanical appliance that you install in your home that basically burns a pelletized version of that firewood. Wood is ground into sawdust, it's squeezed really hard, and it comes out almost like fat chunks of rice. And that's what the pellet stove burns. It's uh, you know, an electrical appliance that, that slowly and carefully burns those and produces heat for you. Right. So on a pellet stove, what you have, you have what we call a hopper. You put the fuel in, correct? You would actually pour the fuel into it. And then you've actually got yep. enough fuel that that pellet stove could burn for a day or possibly two or three days, depending on the heat demand. Would that be correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, we have a, a particular pellet stove at home in our dining room, and I probably fill that once a day. Uh, it depends on how you're using it, how old your house is. We have an older house, so we tend to keep the thing on all the time. Um, but yeah, like you said, a day's worth of heat, maybe a couple of days worth of heat. You know, it all depends. Okay. So, and on a pellet stove, the majority of pellet stoves on the marketplace require electricity to operate. Would that be a true statement? That's uh, the vast majority of them. There's only like one or so that don't, but yeah, the vast majority require power. Yeah, to my knowledge, there's one that U.S. stove makes. It's what they call a gravity-fed unit, but it's not going to heat a large area or anything like that. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's a really neat concept because it powers out. You've still got it going and all that. So with the pellet stove, that's one thing to remember is if your power is out, what's the pellet stove going to do for that? It's going to shut right off and uh, depending on how you're venting is you're going to get a lot of smoke in your house because there's no fan pulling that smoke out. So be aware of that. That happens Correct. sometimes. Right. So on a pellet stove, you actually have a lot of times two to three fans. One fan is to blow the air into the home that's being heated. You also have what we call yeah. a combustion fan that would force air into the firebox for combustion. And then we would have a third fan on some units that would actually be in the draft side to push the smoking gases out. Would that be right? Yeah, that's correct. In most cases, it's two fans. You get your combustion fan driving the fire, and then you have your convection fan driving the room air. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're, they're two completely separate system, and they do not mix. Okay. So can a pellet stove, does it require a chimney going above the roof, or can you vent a pellet stove directly out of a wall on a home? You can do both. You can install a pellet stove in a convenient chimney or fireplace that you're not using, you can install it into that. There's ways to do that safely and efficiently. It's actually my preferred way to do it. Uh, or uh, you can just vent it straight out the wall of the home if you have a nice spot to do that. And that's that's how we vent ours at home. It just goes right out our dining room wall um, through a, a special, you know, they make parts to do that, special venting pipe and things like that. Um, right. It's a kind of a good convenient way to put heat in your home quickly. Right. So what you would be doing when you vent a pellet stove, you've got a special pipe that's made for pellet stoves. I believe it has a stainless steel yeah. interior and then has a galvanized right. outer and the gas and the there's gas to get the seals between where the pipe joins together. Would that be correct? That's correct. Do you have to use silicon to also seal those joints up when you put the pipe together? 
Good question. On some pipe you do, and you have to read the instructions. Uh, there are types of pipe that you have to seal the joints with silicone, and there are types of pipe that you don't. The ones that you don't will have a ring seal kind of built right into the pipe. Um, you can look in there, or you can just read the instructions. Okay, so it's adamantly important that if a person's going to put in a pellet stove, that they read the manual both on the stove itself and also for the vent pipe that's going to be made by a different company. Would you agree with that statement? I, I very heavily agree with that statement. Absolutely. Okay, so we also hear about stoves that burn corn and cherry pits and pecan shells and grain and all kinds of things. So are those just regular pellet stoves or is there something special about those stoves to burn those other fuels? Yeah, I don't run into them too much here in rural New Hampshire. I mean, we're pretty much, we're, we're very woodsy, so we have lots of wood sources around, but places out in like the Midwest, it's common, uh, they have stoves that burn corn. Um, some stoves can burn either pellets or corn or cherry pits. You have to read the instructions. You have to know what you're buying. Um, but the manual detail, uh, how to go about doing that. And usually that involves changing some kind of settings in the control board. There's buttons that you have to push or, or, or change. And it varies the amount of, of air and fuel that, that pours into the, the stove at any one time. Uh, the, the fuels burn at different rates. So a wood pellet's going to burn differently than corn and it's going to require a different amount of fuel and air going in at the same time. Okay. So let me ask you this. In today's world, someone could buy a wood stove to give them supplemental heat in the house. Someone could buy a gas stove and give them supplemental heat, or they could buy a pellet stove. What would be the decision to go towards a pellet stove? Why is that a good investment for somebody to consider in the year 2021? Well, you have to consider the fuel source. I mean, here, you know, wood stoves and pellet stoves are both very popular where I am. Uh, wood stoves, you know, have benefits. They work without power, but you have to take care of the fuel. You have to cut the wood, split it, stack it, bring it in. You have to touch that firewood three, four times before it actually makes it into your wood stove. Pellet stoves, the fuel's a lot more convenient. Uh, we, you know, we buy it in, uh, by the pallet. We get two pallets per year. They're 40, what, 40 pound bags. We get 50 bags or something like that. And uh, all you really do, the, the pallet gets dropped off by our porch. You walk out, you grab your bag, open your bag, dump it into the stove, and you walk away. And and it's a the fuel source is a lot more convenient with a pellet stove. Uh, if that appeals to you, then that's the direction you want to go. And in, in your market area, you're out in the, you're in a rural area. Okay, you're not in a large urban area, so there's a lot not a lot of natural gas where you are. Would that be a correct statement? Uh, out where I am, yeah, there's zero natural gas anywhere. You have to travel at least 40 minutes to get to any, any kind of natural gas source. Okay. So what's more cost? What's the better buy BTU wise pellets or propane gas? Ooh, I'm not really sure about BTUs. Uh, I would probably say cost wise, probably pellets are a bit cheaper. Uh, it depends on the market. I mean, propane, Pellets, they all tend to fluctuate. I would say on average, pellets tend to be cheaper, which is why a lot of people uh, prefer to install them, um, just more affordable heating. Yeah. So are pellets available pretty much year round? Is there ever any shortage of pellets where people can't get pellets, man? You want to, if you're going to order your pellets, you want to do it early. Uh, don't do what I did this year and wait, wait late because you're going to end up waiting for a while. Um, pellets are generally readily available. Uh, like a lot of things, they will have specific years and specific times of year when they're harder to get. Um, try to get it ordered by, say, October. So if you wait much after that, it's that's when the demand is on and you end up waiting a little bit. And there are times uh, a couple years ago where it was after January, I think, it, it, we were running a little low and it was just really hard to find pellets anywhere. Uh, it tends to fluctuate every year. Just buy early, try to plan ahead. Okay. So as a service technician, what are the major service calls that you would run on a pellet stove? Why would people call black moose? My pellet stove's not working. What do you usually find is the reason when pellet stoves are not working properly? Uh, it's about 50, 50, you know, it's 50%, uh, just not, I don't want to say lack of maintenance, but some of the maintenance is a little harder to get to. Uh, so just, Soot and things end up clogging up exhaust passages, which makes which makes it harder for the pellet stove to breathe. Uh, that's about half the time, I suppose. It's something related to that. The other half of the time, it's some kind of electrical or mechanical malfunction. Uh, thermal switch is broken. 
an auger is actually physically broken, um, anything like that, any of the safety devices that are meant to shut a pellet stove off have failed. Um, I would say it's 50-50 in those. Clean your pellet stove and you'll cut down about half your service calls. Okay, so what is the maintenance that a consumer should do to their pellet stove? What's the things that the consumer should do maybe on a weekly or a monthly basis? What's what's the maintenance they should be doing to that unit in their home to stop having to call you? Okay. Always read your book first off, because your book will have a, a specific schedule of maintenance that needs to be done um, in it, but they all tend to average out to be about the same thing. It's open up the front of your stove, vacuum it out, clean it out real well, clean your heat exchanger, which are the tubes kind of up top there, clean out your burn pot, scrape it down real well, get all like the visible soot that's around the firebox, get that all cleaned out, clean every window because you want to see the fire. Um, and then some stoves have little passages inside the firebox here that you can open up and kind of vacuum out and just keep them kind of clear. Uh, that's usually done on a, on a daily, every other day, every couple days, uh, every couple weeks kind of schedule, depending on the manufacturer. Um, it's just common sense, you know, open up the front, clean what looks dirty. Gotcha. So here's the thing that people need to realize that they have soot built up on their heat exchanger tubes on the walls inside the unit. That's going to be an insulator that's going to stop the heat transfer. Would you agree with that statement? Yes. You leave them dirty. You will get less money for your pellet pellet uh, or less heat for your pellet money. Right. And that's just a simple matter of taking maybe a paintbrush or a lightweight brush inside and brushing down the walls, brushing the heat exchangers and that kind of stuff. Yep, that's a, I, I use an old paintbrush at home. I've got an old paintbrush kind of stuff behind my uh, pellet stove at home. I just get my shop back and use that to kind of keep the dust down and just kind of brush, 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 and you're done. Yeah. Do any of the units that are made today, do any of them have battery backup that if the power goes out where the unit will continue to run? Uh, that is general. That's something you want to check with your dealer with when you're purchasing one or looking to purchase. Uh, there are a lot of battery backups available. Um, we have some customers with them. It's not going to run your stove indefinitely, but it's going to be good for a few hours, a shorter power outage, or at minimum, it'll just give you a chance to hit the off button and let the, let the pellet stove cycle down. Uh, so it doesn't blow all that smoke into your home when the power truly goes out. Yeah. You know, when we started selling pellet stoves some years ago on the control of the pellet stove, we actually regulated the amount of pellets that were dropping into the unit on the older units. But today, don't most pellet stoves work on a thermostat that when the house requires heat, the pellets come up and fires, the unit fires automatically, just like a furnace would? Uh, yes. Uh, most just. I'm trying to think if there's any accept acceptance for new stoves, but I think just about everything out there has a provision. You can operate it without a thermostat if you want and just do it manually. That's what we do at our house. Um, or you can install a thermostat and head over to a wall thermostat and turn the stove on and off automatically. I mean, pretty much every stove out there has that provision now. So about every stove has electronic ignition. So the stove, you can set it up when the thermostat doesn't require heat, the pellet stove goes completely out. And then when the thermostat requires heat, it will self light itself and come up to producing heat. Am I correct in that? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, they also, for some houses, they have another mode too, where it will just switch between a high burn and a low burn, but uh, you do have the on and off option too. Okay. What about the burn? Does it, how realistic do fires look in a pellet stove? Does it look like wood burning or is it kind of, is it kind of different? Is it kind of like a blast look of fire? I mean, what's the difference in the look of a wood stove and a pellet stove? Well, it is, it is real fire. Um, the pellet stove, the flame tends to be brighter and more active, a little bit more like uh, somebody's holding a little torch at the bottom of your, uh, the bottom of your stove and it's blasting a flame upwards. Uh, it just tends to be a brighter, more active flame, moves a lot quicker, whereas a wood stove just tends to be gentle and rolling and, and relaxing and that sort of thing. Gotcha. Now, a pellet stove, just like any other appliance, has a life. If we take a good pellet stove, Matt, and we maintain it, how many years mm -hmm. can a consumer expect to get out of a pellet stove before it's going to be time for replacement? Are we talking 10 years, 15 years, five years? What would you predict the life of a good pellet stove to be if it's properly maintained? I would say on average, uh, just kind of a gut feeling, you know, I, I would be comfortable saying 10 to 15 years if it's well maintained. Um, I mean, we run, we run into some pellet stoves in the field that are 20 years old and still going. We run into some that are five years old and on their last legs. 
10 to 15 years, buy a decent stove. The, the, generally, the, the, the higher price stoves tend to last a bit longer um, and take care of it. Yeah, 10 to 15 years would be pretty pretty average, I suppose. Okay, so when you talk about the quality of the stove, would you say the quality of the stove is tied into the price you pay for the stove? In other words, if you're getting a low-cost stove, there's probably some things that have been cut short in that unit that's going to make it not last as long. Would that be true? Definitely not knocking the lower cost stoves, but yes, uh, generally, if you spend more upfront, you're going to get a higher quality unit. Even if the auger motors look the same, there's going to be some subtle differences inside that are going to make, make for example, the auger motor last or ignite or something like that. Um, every stove is going to have wear and tear and break. Uh, every stove is going to require service. We just find that the more higher end stoves do tend to break a little less. Um, you know, more inexpensive stoves, they can work and you can make them work, and especially if you maintain them. Um, but yeah, they tend to make tend to be made with a little less expensive components. And uh, and there tends to be the other big difference there is they tends to be a little less support. Uh, it's harder to get a hold of the company. There's no real service network set up for them. Uh, that's also where they kind of save their money to offer them at a lower rate too. Right. But one of the things, the same, you know, go ahead. Uh, the, well, the, the old, the old motto, you get what you pay for. Um, I mean, it's, it's true in cars, anything you buy, I mean, pellet stoves are no different. Yeah. So would it be good advice that if someone's watching us right now and they're considering buying a pellet stove, they should buy it from a dealer that can offer service on that unit. Would you agree with that? I would, especially if it's your first pellet stove, um, you know, some, if you're a fairly handy, do it yourself kind of person, you might, you could probably be okay. Uh, but if you, if you're new to pellet stoves, if you don't, uh, if you're not excited by the prospect of poking things with a multimeter and working around electricity, yes, definitely, you know, seek a, seek a proper servicing dealer to purchase your stove, wherever that is, whatever brand that is. Okay. And one last question for it, Matt, if somebody was considering a pellet stove, what would be your advice for things to look for in that pellet stove? What's, what, what, what's your advice to make it sure it's a good purchase for them? Well, I mean, what we just talked about, look, make sure it has a good reputable dealer standing behind it. Uh, make sure it's a good major brand. Uh, it should be something where they've got a, a dealer net set up somewhere. It, you can search on the internet and find out just where all the dealers are in the country. Uh, that's really what I would look for. Uh, make sure there's they've been around for a while make sure they have a good support network okay well brother i appreciate you i appreciate your time being on here today let's take give the give the listeners your website address so if somebody's looking up in your market area how do they find black moose chimney matt it's real simple black moose chimney.com Blackmoosechimney.com. So you're located in Antrim, New Hampshire, which is about an hour from Manchester, New Hampshire. Am I correct on that? Yeah, we're out in the western part of the state, kind of the big empty western quadrant where it's just all small towns. It's lovely out here. I love it. Yeah, it is nice. I've been up here a couple of times. I enjoy, you know, some, you got, you know, the, you live so far out. Sometimes the GPS don't work. You better know where you're going to when you're up in your market area, right? Okay, brother. Hey, yeah, man, our I yeah. I appreciate you being on here with me today, folks. This has been the Fireplace Show sponsored by CBC Success Group. We present this for consumers to help educate you on the goods, the products, and how to take care of your fireplace and your chimney needs. So join us every week here on the Fireplace Show. Appreciate it. Look forward to you joining us on a future episode.